So, as you can see, this is the pebble I have that is defective. It you know, looks ex perfectly fine. The problem is nothing displays on the screen. And you can press the button and the backlight comes on. And then the backlight will fade out, but nothing ever gets displayed on the screen. Uh, while I was testing it, I was able to get it to connect to my phone, and it does work properly. It's just the screen that seems to be defective. So hopefully it's the screen itself and not something like the connection. And I have a new screen that I'm going to try to replace it with. This is my substitute for the heating bag from iFixit. Uh, this is just a, <laughs> this is just a heated neck pillow, so hopefully it'll transfer heat and start working on cracking the case open. So this is the screen from Mouser. It's the exact same model that they use in the actual pebble. As you can see, there's a uh, film on it. That's what those red stripes are. So I'll have to take that film off before we put it in the watch. Probably good enough. I need a stand for this shit. Yeah, representing. I got it that far without breaking any clips. Yeah. Let me put this. But I can't. Let me put this towel down. Fuck to get it Shit. any farther. <laughs> oh, we're recording. I hacked at it a little bit with a knife. That knife. Now I'm hitting it again. Also, this is an aromatherapy bag, so you know, worst case, I have a broken, good smelling watch. So, the knife is wedged into the corner of the pebble faceplate. Don't try this at home, kids. It's dangerous. Also, playing with knives is dangerous. Especially when you're holding a small object, and the knife is, like, on the small object, and you're holding it. And if you slip, you're going to cut your hand open. Also, this, this is unrelated. But still, don't play with knives. Well... I snapped the uh, first corner. That's the wrong side. I snapped this corner. Trying to pry it. Kind of have this corner kind of pried. This lighting sucks. Hey, look. Better lighting, sort of. Fucking lamps. I need to heat this up again in a sec. Don't forget to drink water, kids. <sighs> Knives are dangerous, okay? And I already cracked the corner of the case. And the screen's bad anyway. And I'll probably just fashion some sort of new faceplate for it. So, you know. I got out the Dremel. This is gonna be fun. Pro tip, a Dremel triggers the vibration sensor. Also, yes, it still has a charge. Welp, just snapped the corner. Good thing the screen was broken anyway. Also, let's see. Yeah, it's still golden. Making progress. Also, a little surprise. Yay! So it seems the screen itself is somehow bonded to the front of the faceplate. Focus, come on. It's moving. Hmm. Okay, so 
there is a sort of pattern under this faceplate. I just kind of broke this here. I think this in focus. Oh, shit. There we go. Uh, there's a groove all the way around the inside here. This is where we're at so far. Focus. Okay. Yes. Uh, pretty chewed up. But it's separated. All along there. And along there. And along there. And yeah. Hmm. I if I can do this. Oh. Hmm. So I got some better lighting. This lamp. And still this lamp up here. But anyway. Um, I've successfully pried the shit out of it. As you can see. This is the pebble. Um, might be kind of hard to see in this lighting. But there's a groove. And it, yeah, it, it still works. There's a groove that runs around the very edge. There's a lot of glue. It's kind of fucked up over here from the Dremel. But this side, you can kind of see it a little better. And that groove has glue in it. You can see the little gray line up there is the edge of the glue. So it's sealed really well. So I very carefully peeled the film off of the back of this. The film on the front side is still there, but I peeled it off the back. As you can see, there's those, uh, those little edges along there. Are the equivalent contacts over on this one, which is hard to see, but I'm not going to try to do this. Actually, I need two hands for this, so yeah. The data sheet explains that it's just pressure contact with this bottom little piece of glass. So as you can see, the bottom little piece of glass is right above that thin film contact, and when it gets pressure on it, there's the screen. Oh, stupid clear. Once you get the uh, pressure on it, like so, and the screen comes on. Oops, out of alignment again. Should get pressure on it, and the screen comes on. The pebble hasn't written to the screen again because, since this is like a e paper style screen, since it hasn't had any data written to it, it's just going to have garbage signal in it. So you actually need. Oh shit. You actually need to press a button to realize that it works. So, that's just some garbage data. You press that button, there you go. And when it refreshes the top border in a second, or at least it was lucky timing the first time, but uh, the top border's the clock. And once it refreshes that, it keeps it like so. So yeah, the screen works just by pressure, and as you can see, like I'm just kind of like wiggling on the contact. It's pretty robust, but whatever top I decide to rebuild, because that's not going back on, <laughs> it needs to be able to put pressure on this contact. So I'll have to think of something. Okay, so the plan here is I have this old cell phone here 
the plan is to use the screen, not the screen itself, but this quite durable screen protector. Use that, take it out, cut it down, and use that for the uh, replacement as the screen protector on this, and then probably just epoxy the edges down and go from there. So we'll see how that works. Okay. So, I have the screen on, I have it working. I took a uh, the screen protector off the old phone. Not screen protector, but the cover of the screen itself. And cut out this nice, clear, pretty sturdy plastic, scratch resistant. And the plan is to try to glue it on there and make a new cover. But first, I need to... First, we need to glue the screen down. We'll see if it holds. Anyway, yeah, the uh, weak clothespin is a pretty easy way to test the screen without actually holding the screen down yourself. And I put some uh, epoxy all along the bottom edge of the screen while it's clamped. So hopefully the epoxy dries, holds it in place, and it can remove the clothespin and then just work on putting some sort of cover on the screen. So the epoxy obviously worked. The screen is maintaining contact even without me pressing on it. I can go into the menu, do anything I want. So that looks good. Now I just have to put a cover on it. Okay, so I cut down the screen protector, the screen cover, actually. So now it should just fit right on top of the screen. And then the plan is to use this hot glue gun with a fairly fine tip and hopefully seal around the edges. So, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, put hot glue all around the edges, and it now has a sturdy cover on top of the screen, and the only thing left is to find some paint and paint it, and hopefully it will look good. Okay, brushes, paint, finished glue, and hot, hot glued all along the edges. Let's start with painting it and see how it goes. Okay, so I very carefully put two pieces of painter's tape to cover the screen. As you can see, I folded it over so I'll be able to pull it off easily and cut it so it approximates the edges. So worst case, I get a little bit on the screen protector, but nothing actually covering the important part of the screen. Now for painting. So it's all painted and dried overnight. Uh, this is two coats applied at the same time. It's a purple color, but it's kind of hard to tell. Now I'm going to take off the tape. So I finally got around to editing this video and I uh, realized all there is is a picture of the final product. Uh, I've been wearing this watch for a month and a half now. Um, I didn't put any sort of top coat on the paint, so it wore off pretty easily. And the hot glue itself uh, didn't bond that well to some of the corners. So let's see here. So as you can see, this corner is kind of worn off. Uh, the paint's worn out, but I mean, it still works. I've got glands installed. Can go through the minis and everything. In total, I spent about 30 bucks, 22 on a screen, and uh, maybe eight or so on the paint with the paintbrushes. So, this is a good project.